Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And we are on day two of the Hemlock Vale campaign. Uh, we have set up the scenario already for the prelude. After the prelude, we are going to play the second day scenario. But first off, let's go into what upgrades I did with my seven experience to uh, Wilson Richards deck. So uh, with the seven experience, I upgraded both copies of my prepared for the worst to level two and one of the cleaning kits to level three, uh, because we also finished our meal in the night prelude of the first day we had to add the Hemlock Curse into the deck. So what this card does is a negative uh, skill card, basically. Uh, it is uh, this skill icon subtracts from your skill value instead of adding to it. If this skill test fails, discard each card in your hand and uh, force at the end of your turn. If the Hemlock Curse is in your hand, discard one card at random from your hand. Okay, so we'll just shuffle those cards into our deck. And we have set up set up here. Actually, I have to check if I'm starting from the correct location. So each investigator begins at the boarding house. So we are at the boarding house with uh, Wilson Richards. And uh, again, this is the prelude. So we won't be doing a normal mulligan. We also uh, don't have an encounter deck, and uh, let's see. We still need to put one Doom onto the agenda, because there is only one investigator in the game. Okay, so basically, again, we will be running around uh, Hemlock Town and talking to people to uh, get better rankings to our um, reputation with them and that's basically it and also we need to still put the uh, Tudor Park in play at the crossroads so I'll just uh, put that so Tudor Park is at the crossroads and I think we want to go talk to her because we already have a tree reputation with Judith and everybody else is set aside out of play. So uh, that is basically it. Uh, we'll just jump right into the prelude. So without further delay, let's get started. Let's start by reading the agenda. Uh, dawn of the second day. The village continues preparations with cheery resolve despite the door weather. Investigators cannot take damage, horror or be defeated. Objective, talk to the locals and learn more about Hemlock Isle. And the act is uh, Dark Clouds. Uh, dreary clouds threaten rain as thunder rumbles overhead. Locals puzzle about making preparations. Forced when you draw a weakness, cancel its revelation effect and discard it. Oh yeah, I have this in reverse. Okay. That's uh, the setup done, so... We'll just head, uh, jump in, in. So we have the day two card and the veil again. Nothing has changed with those cards. So first off, we'll draw our opening hand. So I'll just give my deck a good shuffle because I haven't <laughs> shuffled it enough after I put the cards I upgraded into my deck. Again, we are starting with one damage and one horror because of the in the thick of it, which bought us versatile before we started the campaign. Okay. So what I'm really looking for is to find the damn chainsaw before uh, we start the actual scenario. So hasty repairs, we I think can pull a new card. So um, I think uh, we, okay, now I have to check because uh, I'm not sure. Was it in the preludes or, or the day missions that you couldn't do the mulligan, but we could do the mulligan in this uh, prelude. 
So I'm just quickly checking because I can't honestly remember. So uh, let's see. I think uh, there is no restriction for the uh, start of the preload, so we can do a mulligan here. If I'm if I'm playing this incorrectly, just let me know in the comments. But I will be mulliganing my whole hand, and we draw a new card. Okay, so again. No um, chainsaw or anything to find the chainsaw with, so we need to be lucky to draw it during the preload here. This is my mm, biggest problem with my deck building is that there is only one or, or only two weapons in the deck and only two cards that help me find them, and those also won't <laughs> help if I don't get them into. Top 9 cards. So we have a Vicious Blow times 2, Venture, Old Keyring and Overpower. So I think uh, we will just uh, start by... Uh, we could heal 1 damage or 1 horror from this location, which we I don't think we want to waste time for that. So I'll head uh, over to the crossroads and do the parlay action. So Pale spend X resources where X is the current day number. We'll do that. So we'll spend two resources to Pale with uh, Judith Park. It is entry number seven. Judith leans against the side of the Atwood house, polishing her rifle as she observes passersby. These sweet little lambs don't even know what I've have to go through to keep them safe, and hopefully they never will, Jomo. You realize she is addressing her rifle and not you. She stops suddenly as if aware of your presence and locks eyes with you. Check Judith Park's notes. If Judith Park saved your ass, proceed to Judith 2. So we'll go to Judith 2. Uh, you can't be... You can bet that bear is alive and has your scent, Judith says grimly. Some of the animals here are incredibly smart. Too smart. I can uh, gar guarantee that things, out, th that things out for blood tonight. Don't go near the woods again. You must decide. Choose one. I can handle myself. Proceed to Judith 3 or thanks for saving us. Uh, skip to Judith 4, so I'll pick the thanks for saving us. Uh, thank me for saving you, Judith Cox and I eyebrow. You're welcome, I guess. Just doing what I'm paid to do. Uh, decrease Judith Park's relationship level. Each investigator earns one bonus experience. That, uh, yeah, well, that sucks. Uh, yeah, so we mark one less reputation with Judith Park, but we get one bonus experience for that conversation, but we should have picked the other resolution. I'll do my free action from here to move to Tad's general store. And I'll do an action to parley. You haggle for goods and chat with the locals. Uh, and it is um, Codex 17. No, I mean Codex 14. Uh, that's general store. Uh, if you are running an errand, uh, you we are not. Otherwise, what what uh, what are you buying? The proper uh, proprietor laughs. At least that's what Tad used to say. When you ask him where Tad is, he goes quiet. You may spend three resources to search your deck for an item asset and play it, ignoring its cost. An investigator may trigger this codex again if they are running an errand. So I'm spending those uh, three resources to search my deck for the chainsaw and play it 
without pay, uh, paying its cost. That's great. And that is my whole turn. We'll go to upkeep, we draw a card, tinker, and we gain a resource. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, this round, now we add one to Doom here. A no encounter card. I think we could go. Mm, where should we go? I think we could check out Hemlock Chapel. So we'll move here, do a free move here, and do the parlay here. Uh, you approach the overgrown chapel at the top of the hill. Uh, codex entry 11. Hem Hemlock Chapel. The entrance to the Hemlock Chapel is choked with parishioners in uh, white clo gold cloaks. So you head around back. As you open the door to uh, to the rear, you hear harsh conversation. You leave the door cracked and listen. A soft voice speaks. It'll be done as you said, mother, but I was wondering exactly why you need us to... Uh, it is not uh, your place to question, not, nor to speak, to, but to obey. Mother Rachel Stern's voice cuts like a knife. Now you must join your brethren and I must join the procession. Simply do as I asked. So as the set aside resident encounter set for Mother Rachel and put her in the play at Hemlock Chapel as at side face up. Okay, and uh, here is Mother Rachel. And uh, to parlay with Mother Rachel, we need to test willpower two. So I'll do that next. And uh, I don't have anything to commit to the test, so I'm just testing uh, 3 versus 2. Minus 3, we don't succeed, so that is our turn. Uh, our chainsaw also has some uh, tokens for Uh, supplies, so we not, don't in, want to forget about those. Okay, so that is our round. We'll go to upkeep, we draw prepare for the worst, and we gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another do. No encounter card again. So I think uh, we are really not going to play anything else. Uh, I will be keeping the old keyring and the tinker in my hand because when we start the proper scenario we'll be playing the tinker fast and then the old keyring so that we can use the chainsaw and a hand uh, asset on top of that. Okay, so I'm just going to try to parlay again with Mother Rachel. Uh, three against two. Plus one, we succeed. So we will be reading entry one. Mother Rachel stands at the head of a procession. He, her train wave bright colorful ribbons as they sing a little littling song. The night is long, the woods are dark, the stubborn child, starborn child is clothed in bark. Silent we wait for summer rain, the cleansing wash to end all pain. The procession halts as Mother Rachel breaks from the group to walk to your side. Check Mother Rachel's notes. Um, if Mother Rachel intervened, it, uh, she doesn't, didn't, so we'll skip to Mother Rachel 3. Uh, Mother Rachel grips your hand tightly in her as, as uh, she looks down at you with a magna Magnanimous smile. There is so much that you do not yet understand, and yet I believe you will understand it once the feast begins. 
As the matron returns to the procession, a young girl in a rabbit mask peers out from the midst of the crowd. Strings of flowering garlands are uh, roped around her hands and ankles. Uh, increase Mother Rachel's relationship level. Uh, each investigator earns one bonus experience. Draw one card. You may play a charm or spell asset from your hand, ignoring its cost. So we'll mark one. Reputation. We draw one card and we don't play anything because we don't have anything to play. And we only can carry our one asset. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. But I think we have a good starting hand already. So that was our first action. Second action, we'll move to Atwood House and uh, we'll read Codex Entry 13. You hear William and River arguing. This is all we have left. We can't turn our back on our past, our legacy, William insists. River cuts in with a scathing look. The hemlock legacy is dead and I know several buyers in Harlem who uh, would turn this soggy island into a paradise. You must decide. Choose one. Uh, William has a point, uh, or River has a point. Uh, let them fight it out. So, um, we can't choose either of these because our relationship level is not high enough. So we have to just uh, read the last part. As the, their, uh, as the pair sling incre incredibly personal insults back and forth, a peal, peal of thunder si silences them both. William's brow furrows when he sees you, River turns and grimaces as well. An uneasy silence follows, and you realize you just eavesdropped on a very sensitive conversation. Decrease both William Hemlock and River Hartone's relationship levels. And um, okay, we had only one on River Hartone, so we remove one, but we haven't talked to William before, so that nothing changed there. Okay, well, we are not making many friends here, so yeah. Okay, well, that is that round. We'll draw a card, deduction, and we gain one resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. And uh, we add a doom again. So four of six, no encounter card. First action, we'll move to the old mill. And uh, we actually could try to get this clue from here. So I will be investigating. And because there are a lot of cards we don't need, we'll commit prepared for the worst for this test. So we are investigating four versus two. Uh, minus three, unfortunately. But we'll try again, three versus two. I could commit the venture, but I think I'll want to play, play him onto the table. Uh, elder thing is a minus one. If this is a parlay attempt, reveal another token. Well, it isn't, so we succeed. We grab that clue and we read um, Codex 12. Uh, the old mill. The old mill is eerily silent as you poke around uh, the overgrowth. As thunder rumbles overhead, a long-legged crosshopper fl uh, flits through the air. You note that the insect has misshapen black wings. Draw three cards. One, two, three. And we get uh, ad hook, lock picks, and push to the limit. Okay, and um, that is all we can do. We'll go to upkeep, we draw a card. I actually need to discard now. I think I had to discard earlier already, but we'll see. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, we are way over our hand limit. That we can get rid of, that we can get rid of. Um, I think we could keep um, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight. We'll discard these two. Okay. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Five of six doom. No encounter card. Uh, let's see. I think we can go to the comments or the boarding. I think I'll go to the boarding house. We should have a pallet here immediately, but we'll do it now. So you ask her about the bail and Codex 9, boarding house. Miss Olmsted is more than happy to answer your questions as she sets plates heaped uh, with su succulent fruit and sizzling meats. Don't forget to come to the dance this evening. Everyone will be there. She smiles, your mouth waters as the scent of food, uh, at the scent of food, but you also catch the acrid undercurrent. Choose one of the options below to resolve. Investigators at boarding house may spend any number of actions as a group to choose that many additional options. An investigator may trigger this codex again. Uh, Leah was supposed to prepare a feast in the crossroads. If she's there, I know she'd appreciate your help. An investigator at the boarding house may immediately move to the crossroads. Uh, Simon probably hiding in the fields. Field search the set aside resident encounter set for Simon Atwood and put him into play at the old mill asset side face up. Uh, damn, <laughs> we should have done that earlier. Uh, Gideon is probably at the commons like always. Search the encounter set uh, aside residence encounter set for the Gideon Mistra and put him into play at the commons asset side face up. Okay, so. Um, There's no point in doing any of those because this is our last last round of the prelude. So yeah, we'll just move to the crossroads. That sucks. And uh, actually, we uh, just spawn Gideon. Misra at the commons, but we'll uh, do our as our last action. We'll heal one horror. So we start with without the horror for the next next uh, scenario, and that is everything. We'll draw one card, and uh, it is an emergency cash which we will discard and we gain a resource. So that is the prelude, and we'll just head up. Uh, to the next round, so we add one doom, which makes us advance. Uh, graving hunger. You welcome back. You're you're recovering. You recovering back at the boarding house. Miss Olmsted lays out a spread uh, spread of warm butter cornbread roasted radishes, the size of your fist, and a pile of grey oily eggs. Your stomach rolls as you nibble on some of your field rations rather than partake. Check the camp log if Bertie was rescued. Resolution 1. So we'll read the resolution 1. Dr. Marcus emerges from upstairs with stony look on her face. Bertie follows, nursing a bandaged arm. His face is ashen as uh, he recounts his experience. I was walking at the edge of the woods, I think at midday, when I felt the most de delicious, um, uh, he struggles to put it into words, an absolute joy. And then I suppose I lost myself. When I came to, I was, uh, it was night and I was quite lost. And now that I've returned, I can't help but reflect on the... Uh, that breathless feeling. Emotion recollected in tranquility, eh? The professor rolls her eyes but doesn't comment. Proceed to resolution 3. Dr. Marcus par pours herself a strong cup of coffee. I'm going to take advantage of the cooling rain and head up to the Pearl Ridge. Join me if you like. She takes a bite of her eggs 
and wrinkles her nose. Is that a metal taste? She discreetly spits the egg into a handkerchief as Miss Olmsted emerges from the kitchen with a stack of flapjacks and a sever uh, serves several hungry guests. Uh, do not record the victory axe value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator earns the bonus experience award during this prelude. Uh, record each bonus experience earned under unspent experience in your campaign log, but do not spend any of it until the end of the next scenario. Make preparations for your next survey. Choose one asset in your play area to keep for the next scenario. That will be the chainsaw. It must be one that doesn't normally stand in play. Discard each other asset and attachment in your play area, except for those that start each game in play. Discard down to your opening hand size. Shuffle your discard pile into your deck. You cur your current hand is your opening hand for the next scenario. You will not draw a new opening hand or take a mulligan. When setting up the scenario, skip steps 1 to 8 of the setting of the game on page 27 of the rules reference. Uh, check the area surveyed section of your camp log and choose a scenario that has not yet been checked off. Uh, we will choose the um, Silent Heat, so to explore the area, Quiet Pearl Ridge in the Silent Heat, turn to page 19. So I will set up the Silent Heat scenario and we'll hop over to the actual scenario, so let's start doing that, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we are set up here on the Silent Heat scenario, and uh, we are starting at the Pale Estate Ruins. Dr. Rosa Marquez is at Crystal Grove because it's day two. Um, this is, will be my starting hand, so we have Old Key Ring, Tinker, Vicious Blow, Venture, Lockpicks and Deduction. And uh, we'll read Unsettling Silence. The dry landscape is perfectly still, as beguiling glows ha glow hangs over everything. Forced when Doom is placed on this agenda, if the Brood Queen enemy is it set aside, Reveal tokens from the chaos pack equal to the number of insect enemies in the victory display. If a skull or alter fail token is revealed, spawn the set aside brood queen enemy. And doom threshold is 8. A lost legacy. The legacy of Pearl Ridge is a story of note amongst the locals. The Pearls were a prominent family like the Hemlocks and Atwoods, but the family vanished in a curious incident back in 1906. What could have happened here? Objective. When the round ends, investigators of the Barrel Estate Ruins may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. And we need two clues. Well, uh, we already have one from the prelude, so we only basically need to get this one so we can advance, which is great. So, uh, yeah, let's start by playing Tinker fast onto our chainsaw. And then I think I'll play the lock picks. I'll use the arcane slots for my extra hand hand items. And then I will do an investigation with the lock picks. So I'm investigating seven versus three. Minus three. And uh, if you do not <laughs> succeed by at least two, discard lockpicks. Well, we got the clue, but we lost the lockpicks. Uh, lucky thing we have the uh, old keyring in hand, which I think I should have used here, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so we'll spend the clues to advance immediately. We want to get going. Uh, the Varens. Amongst the ruins of the Pearl Estate, you find Susan Pearl's diary. It details attempts to explore tunnels beneath the ridge. They were called the Varens due, due to their maze-like structure. 
Perhaps some of the Pearl family disappeared into the surrounding tunnels, but why? You resolve to investigate. Randomly put the three set-aside locations from the horrors in the rock encounter set into play and reveal adjacent to the three starting locations as explained on page 20 of the campaign guide. Uh, take the remaining set-aside location salt chamber, uh, larva tunnel and crystal nursery along with the top three cards of the encounter deck. Shuffle them together and randomly deal one card face down beneath each location. That's uh, done and search the heath. The warrens are likely the final resting place of the Pearl family. Uh, studying their remains may shed light on what happened uh, here. Action. If there are no clues on your location, draw the top card beneath your location. Action. Uh, fast trigger the, the investigators at your location spend one clue as a group. Look at the top card beneath your location. You may place that card on the bottom of its stack. Objective if each undefeated investigator has resigned and there are one or more crystal remains in the victory display. Advance. Okay. I think uh, we'll do the action and look what's underneath here. Just might be a risk, but we find the crystal nursery. Revelation. Put crystal nursery into play adjacent to the location from which it was, was drawn. And uh, a codex entry uh, is that Omega. Okay, so I'm scooting these locations down a bit. Because we need to put this location here. Two clues on there. Codex uh, Omega, Crystal Nursery, I think we need to read it, yeah, re we read it at uh, Revelation. You enter a massive cavern the size of an amphitheater filled with milky white crystals. Innumerable insects hang from the walls and bask on the floor in pale, get watery light that fills down from a hole in the ceiling. You realize the opening above is massive. It is the massive chasm in front of the Pearl Estate. A low subponic hum permeates the room. You feel as though you have entered a sacred space. Gather one of the set aside crystal remains cards along with the top two cards for the encounter deck. Shuffle them together and place the three cards face down in a stack beneath crystal nursery. So we pick one and two cards from here, give them a good shuffle, and put them underneath here. Okay, that is everything. Well, no enemies, we'll go to upkeep, we draw over power and gain a resource. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, uh, which means we have to do this one. So when a Doom is placed on this agenda, if the Brood Queen enemy is set aside, real tokens from the Chaos Bag equal to the number of insect enemies in the victory display. Uh, so at the moment we don't have to reveal anything. But we'll still get an encounter card, which is Chroma Blight. Revelation, put chrome applied into play into your threat area, limit one, one per investigator. After you draw one or more cards from your deck, place one resource on chrome applied as bri brilliance forced. If there is a total of six brilliance in chrome applied, put the set aside copy of crystal parasite into play at your location, remove chrome applied from the game. Okay. Well, that's okay. We have a chainsaw to deal with that enemy. Okay, well. Uh, I think first action we'll play lock, uh, old keyring two um, keys on it then uh, we'll move we'll investigate and I am going to deduct here using the old keyring 
Uh, I am investigating 4 versus 1, 5 versus 1. Minus 1. We grab a clue, uh, actually we grab two clues here. Then I'll do a fast action to uh, I'll spend both, uh, actually one at a time. So I will check the top card. It is a colorless larva. We'll put that underneath and we'll use the second. And it is an innervation. So we'll put that underneath too. So now next round when we have the action, we can just grab that which we are seek seeking. And nothing else is happening. We'll go to upkeep, we draw, push to the limit, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a do. Encounter card for this round is uh, Defend the Nest. Test book two. If increase the difficulty of this test by one for each lair location in play. If you fail, place one doom on the nearest insect enemy if you cannot take two horror instead. Uh, this is a lair. I think that is the only lair in play. So we are testing three versus three. And I don't have any book icons I want to commit. So we are testing three versus three and I'm probably taking two horror. It is a zero, so we pass. Okay, that's that's great. So, first action, we'll look at the top card here. And it is Crystal Remains, the mother. Revelation, put Crystal Remains in the play, in your play area. Uh, if Crystal Remains is defeated, shuff, uh, shuffle it with the top two cards of the encounter deck and place them face down in a stack beneath the near slayer location. Forced when your turn begins, take one damage. So I'm just putting it into my play area. Oh yeah, and this <coughs> has uh, gotten one because I drew one card. Okay. Let's see, we need to take this to the Pearl Estate Ruins, I think. No. Uh, well, 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 well. Okay, we. I think we need to try and find as many as we can and then resign. Okay. Well, uh, we will move uh, here. We'll go see what um, Rosa Marquez is doing. So we'll head to the Crystal Grove. And that is our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. We draw a card, emergency cash, and this gets one charge and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, still no enemies. We get an encounter card, which is fungal rot. That's fungal rot to an item asset you control without fungal rot attached. If you cannot fungal rot, gain search street asset. Attach assets text box as if it were blank except for traits. Uh, test strength 3. If you succeed, discard fungal rot, otherwise take one damage. So I'm putting it onto the keyring for sure. First action, we will use our power to get rid of this fungal rot. I'm testing uh, 5 versus 3. Skull is X. X is half the number of insect enemies in play or in and in victory display, so it's zero. So we get rid of this. And we draw a card, which is wolf mask. And we get one more charge here. And we had to take one damage at the start of our turn, which I forgot. Okay, second action, we will Investigate and 
Mm. Actually, I think I'll play the wolf mask. And uh, then I will investigate, and I will investigate uh, using the old keyring. So, three, uh, four versus zero. This uh, elder thing is in minus two. If you are at a layer location, reveal another token. Uh, we are not. So, we'll grab this clue. The old keyring is discarded. And as a fast action, we'll look what's underneath here. So we don't want to uh, reveal this card. Okay, and we uh, found the last clue at our location, so we read Dr. Marquez's entry. And it is Act 2. The professor hefts a desiccated man mandible the size of the, her forearm. These creatures have both termite, wasp and other features from a number of insects. It's out of my field. Dr. Christopher would lose his mind if he saw this, but I was able to dig up some interesting finds in the tunnels. Look at this. Choose a location in play. Reveal all cards beneath the chosen location. Discard its treachery. Reveal and put the rest back in any order. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, we'll look what's underneath Ashen Slope. Uh, okay, so we discard that. So we don't want to go there. So uh, these three are the locations we are looking for. But at the moment, we can't do anything about it. So that was our... Turn, no enemies will go to upkeep, we draw cleaning kit, uh, level 3, great, and we get a resource, and we also get one token here. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a doom, still no insect enemies, uh, 4 of 8, encounter card is... Captivating Gleam. Search. Uh, put Captivating Gleam into play in your threat area. Limit one per investigator forced. If you have no cards in hand, take five horror and discard Captivating Gleam. Okay. That sucks. And it searches into Miasmatic Shadow. Monster Color. Aloof Hunter. Uh, Night Elusive. Um, cannot be damaged except by spell, relic and science or encounter cards. Force. When you discard one or more cards from hand at Miasmatic Shadow's location, if it is ready, it engages you and makes an immediate attack. Okay, th this, this will be annoying. Um, just reorganizing these a bit. Oh, oh, yeah, we could have used a clue here to put this into the victory display. So, <coughs> let's back up, um, because I know what's underneath here. I'll do this. So I'm, I'm shuffling these. So a bit of a take back this. <coughs> but we'll put these like so, and uh, let's say I used one of the... Uh, the clue I had to put this into the victory display. <coughs> okay, well, we have this enemy here. I will uh, play the cleaning kit. Now we can use the cleaning kit supplies to use the chainsaw and uh, uh, because we don't know what's underneath here, I'm taking a risk and I am uh, revealing it. Defend the nest test. Um, intellect 2. Increase the difficulty of the test by one for each layer location in play. If you fail, place one doom the nearest insect enemy if you cannot take two horror instead. Okay, so we are testing that. Um, there is one layer location in play, so we are testing uh, 3 versus 3, probably taking the horror. 
uh, plus one. So again, we are lucky and we pass that. That's great. Okay, we have one action left, so I will move over here. Uh, so, Iridescent Passage Force. After you fail a skill test while in investigating in Iridescent Passage, choose and discard one card from your hand. So we don't want to do tests here because this hunts after us here and that is that. So we draw a card, Tinker, and we gain a resource and we get one more charge on this. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, no insects in play, and uh, encounter card for this round is uh, downpour. Test book three. For each point you fail by, you must either lose one action or place one of your clues onto your location. Ouch, this could kill all of my actions for this round. Uh, we are testing uh, three versus three. Minus three. Oh boy. We don't have any clues, so we lose all of our actions. Um, okay, well, that was a quick turn. Uh, no enemies doing anything. This is a loop. We'll go to upkeep. We draw a card. This triggers. And this is removed from the game. And we gain one resource. And we spawn an enemy, which we actually want to fight. Get the Crystal Parasite. Uh, which we can just change so down. So Crystal Parasite is a uh, 2 fight, 6 health, 2 evade, monster, insect, blight. Hunter retaliate, day forced after Crystal Parasite attacks, heal 2 damage from it. Night Crystal Parasite gets plus 2 fight and plus 1 damage value for every 2 damage on it. Okay. That's okay. Okay, we drew a spare chainsaw also, which is great. Not needed at the moment, but uh, yeah. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. And now we have one insect in play, so... Let's see how this works. So we have to um, reveal tokens from the cast bag equal to the number of insect enemies in the victory display. Okay, it's not in the victory display yet, so nothing yet. Okay. So uh, we draw an encounter card, which is uh, Rotting Remains. Test willpower 3. For each point you fail by, take one or now I think we want to commit push to the limit to the test. So we are four versus three. Skull is uh, minus one, so we pass. So that's okay, we don't get any horror. And first action, we'll use the cleaning kit to use the chainsaw to hit the crystal parasites. There should be two clues on this location, by the way. So we are hitting um, four, five, six versus two. Minus three, we deal three damage. We'll hit again using the cleaning kit. Six versus two, minus two. We put this enemy into the victory display. And last action. We will uh, play emergency cash so we can play the venture next round. And no enemy actions, we'll go to upkeep. Uh, we draw a card, 
another emergency gas and we get a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We'll add a doom. Seven of eight and count the Calification. Put calification. Calification in the plane your threat area, limit one per investigator. The first time you move each round, take one direct damage test at agility tree. If you succeed this classification, you may take one direct damage to, for this test to automatically succeed. So first action, we are just uh, taking one damage. Second action, uh, we'll move and we'll move to here, which is the mineral tunnel. Zero shroud, one clue. While you are investigating mineral tunnel, it gets plus one shroud for each card in your hand, max plus six shroud on easy and standard difficulty. That is bad. So it's a shroud of four or five, shroud of six actually next round. We need to play some cards. Enemy face, this enemy hunts over here. Upkeep, we draw, find clothes and gain a resource. Okay, well, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. And I actually forgot to now pull one token from the chaos back last round. So we are pulling one extra this round to see if the brood mother would have. Well, the last round we were okay. But uh, first off, we will uh, add a Doom to the agenda, so it advances. Strange creatures. Uh, an acrid stench wafts from somewhere deep below. The skittering of hundreds of legs fills the air before a monstrous insect emerges from underground. It has sickly translucent skin and a pair of shivering black wings that hang limply over its back. The creature star, uh, stares at you with unfeeling beady eyes, waving its antenna to announce your presence. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an insect enemy is discarded. The lead investigator draws that enemy shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Okay, so we get... Brute Soldier. It is a 3 fight, 2 health, 3 evade, creature insect mutated, aloof patrol, cave location with clues. While brute soldier is ready, its location gets plus 2 shroud. Okay, then we shuffle the discard back into the encounter deck. And uh, before we draw, we'll read Desolation version 2. The insects scurry to a fro, alarmed by your presence. Each insect enemy loses aloof and patrol and gains hunter. Fourth, when doom is placed on this agenda, if the brood queen enemy is set aside, reveal tokens from the chaos pack to the number of insect enemies in the victory play. If a token with a symbol is revealed, spawn the set aside brood queen enemy. Okay. And um, so this guy loses aloof. And again, and patrol against hunter. Okay, well, we'll get an encounter card. We don't have any doom here yet, so. Chroma Blight. <laughs> okay. Uh, this we already had, so I'll just place it over here. So. We'll be spawning another one soon, so that we'll, we'll just kill off that dude for the victory point. Uh, first action, I will uh, use uh, Wolf Mask and Chainsaw to hit this guy. So we are hitting uh, 4, 5, 6 versus 3. Um, this is a minus two if you are at the lair location, we are not. So we just kill this off. This has victory zero, so it goes into the victory display. 
Okay, and uh, we'll set up for next round. So we'll play Find Clothes. We'll play The Venturer. And that is our turn. And we'll tap Venturer to transfer one uh, supply onto the chainsaw. And that is our turn. Now, enemies except this one, and it hunts here. We go to upkeep, we draw a card, we get pushed to the limit, and we put one charge here, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, so now we have two insect enemies into the victor display. So if we reveal a um, symbol, we'll spawn the brood mother. Well, we found one symbol, so we don't have to wait for that any longer. So the brood queen enemy is a one fight, five health, and three evade creature, insect mutated elite spawn. We read that. Massive alert. Insect enemies at Brood Queen's location lose aloof. Brood Queen gets plus one fight for each other insect enemy in play and uh, plus X health where X is the current day number. So this is a uh, five, six, seven health enemy. Not a big deal, but we'll read the codex entry. The massive corpulent form of an insect lurches out of a dark tunnel. The brood queen uh, antennae wave in the dark, emitting unsettling vibrations. In moments, the cave is filled with her bro brood, each of them glowing with faint blue light. Spawn the brood queen at the location nearest the most investigators, at a cave location if able. Uh, remove each insect enemy from the victory display and spawn it. Uh, at the Brood Queen's location. Ouch. Well, this will hurt. So uh, let me read this again. Spawn the Brood Queen at the location nearest to the most investigators at the cave location. So this is the nearest to the... Okay. Uh, so these spawn here too. Ouch. Now I'm in a bit of a pickle, so <laughs> I will be fighting for a couple of rounds now. Okay, well, I'm actually putting these enemies here so I can see them better. So these all are engaged with me. Then we draw our encounter card for this round, which is frozen up here. Well, of course it is. Okay, well, um, we'll use the Venture to charge our chainsaw, and we will use the uh, and we'll uh, put one token on the wolf mask because we engage an enemy. We will use the cleaning kit to. Oh yeah, this exhaust, so we can't do it more times than one turn. So let's actually do it like this because I did use it twice on that one round but we still hit both times. Okay well uh, our, my first two actions is to hit the brood queen. So I'm just hitting and using uh, the cleaning kit so we are hitting uh, four, five, six versus mm, four. So I'm using one of these two. Eight versus four. Minus four. Thank God we used that. So it takes three damage. And my last action is to hit it again. I'm committing Vicious Blow and uh, using the Wolf Mask. And uh, charge from the chainsaw, so... Oh yeah, I forgot to count the plus two from here. So four, five, six, 
seven eight. I uh, was actually up, up by ten as up by six at the last try, but yeah. Now I'm up by five. Another minus four, but uh, we deal four damage, so this brood queen is defeated, goes into the victor display. And that is everything. Uh, enemy phase, uh, we'll test this before the enemy phase, so I'm committing the push to the limit to the test. We really need to get rid of this for um, frozen in fear. I am testing four versus three. It is a zero, so thank God we get rid of this. But this, uh, well, this just hangs here. So these guys hit me for one damage and one horror. Nothing happens to these guys, so we'll take two damage. I'm actually just my fine clothes break and uh, the venture takes one and one. We'll draw a card, we'll get one here and we gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we add a doom, so now we don't have to test this anymore because the brute queen is dead and not set aside. But we'll still draw an encounter card. And it is dissonant voices, so we can't play asset or events, which is fine. We are going to just be chainsawing the whole round. Uh, first action, we will kill this guy. And uh, We'll transfer one more charge here, and um, I'm using the chain, so... I'm actually hitting the this, this one, so we are uh, 6 versus 2, minus 4, 3 damage. Uh, second action, now we'll use this, 8 versus 2, plus 1, this is dead. Last action, uh, yeah, we'll use the last charge from the chainsaw, which will be 6 versus 3, I'll commit this, so we are 7 versus 3. Or the fail. Uh, so I'll place one supply on chainsaw because it's no use dealing the one damage. Okay, so an enemy face that guy hits, the venture bites the dust, and uh, we draw a card, old keyring, nice, and we gain a resource. So that is that round, we add one here, let's go to the next round, oh yeah this also is discarded. We add a doom, uh, 3 of 7, encounter card, uh, commanding resonance, revelation test, will about 3, for each point you fail by, choose a different option from the following, if able, take one damage, discard one card at random from your hand, the nearest insect enemy readies, moves and lo at location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you and makes an immediate attack. Ouch. Mm, nothing to commit, so we are testing 3 versus 3. Uh, minus one. I'll just take one damage. We don't want to discard anything because that would engage us then. Uh, we'll hit this guy. Uh, six versus three. Zero. It is dead. Second action, uh, we'll play another chainsaw and we'll fast 
put a tinker on it. And we'll last action play the emergency cash to get resources so that our hand size is lower so we can investigate here which should have one clue on it next round but that is our turn we'll draw a card lock picks and we gain a resource and uh, this gets one more charge on it that is that round let's go to the next round we add another doom and we get the brood soldier it is aloof uh, patrol cave locations with clues while brood soldier is ready its location gets plus two shroud okay so um, we'll play the lock picks we will engage uh, should we uh, we'll investigate. So, uh, you using the lock picks, we are investigating uh, seven versus one, two, three. Seven versus three. Elder sign. Oh yeah. Um, we uh, succeed. We don't break a lock pick. We get this clue. And that is our turn. We can use this clue to look what's underneath here. Okay, so we don't want to flip that. So let's see. Hmm. Enemy face. Uh, this guy has patrol. Let's see. Yeah, this doesn't have a or, or the brood queen removed the patrol and uh, aloof so this guy hunts over here or patrols towards here okay and uh, we'll go to upkeep we draw a card ad hoc this gets one resource and we'll get a resource that is that round let's go to the next round uh, we had a doom, uh, five of seven, so we are running out of time. And counter course for this round is defend the nest. Test uh, intellect two, increase the difficulty of this test by one for each slayer location in play. If you fail, place one doom on the nearest insect enemy if you cannot take to horror instead. I'm just committing this ad hook to the test, so we're testing five versus three. Minus two, and we are not in a layer, so that succeeds. Okay, um, I think we'll just ignore this guy this round. So we move, move over to here. It is uh, alkaline forest, two shroud, two clues per investigator force. After you reveal alkaline forest, you must either take one direct horror or discard two cards random from your hand. I'll <coughs> Take two horror. Then uh, we will investigate using the lock picks. Minus one. We'll grab one clue and we'll look what's underneath here. Uh, actually, yeah, we can look, uh, we just won't reveal it. So it will be salt chamber, which uh, has a text. Okay. So we need that last clue and maybe that location into play. But yeah, enemy face, this hunts, or patrols here, this hunts here. Upkeep, we draw a card. That spawns this guy. So I think we might run out of time. So 
So we spawn, spawn the crystal parasite number two. And we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom, so this will be the last round. Encounter card is commanding resonance again. So uh, this might actually be bad. We'll uh, we'll test the uh, three versus three. Elder sign, so we pass. Okay. Uh, first action, we'll use the chainsaw. Use the cleaning kit. Oh yeah, this got one charge on it. Now we are hitting six versus two. We deal three damage. We will hit Eight versus two. It is dead. And mm. we don't have enough time to resign, so yeah, we'll move here if if this con or we'll just investigate. So we are investigating with the lockpick. So seven versus two. We'll get the clue. And that is it. So uh, enemy face this moves here. We draw a card, we gain a resource. Then that is that round. Let's go to the next round and see what happens. So we add a doom and we re uh, advance this one. Swarmed. A swarm of insects descend upon you, blocking any escape. One of them darts forward with almost mechanical efficiency, bring a burpucus in your torso. Sharp pain spasms through your body, followed by numbness. The milky white insect retracts a black uh, Proposes dripping blue fluid as you vision begins to swim, passing out in a mercy. You come to two hours later, covered in salt in a dry chamber underground, head pounding. You stagger out of the war warrens into the arid heat. The wound is yours in your side oozes a filmy blue poison, but it doesn't seem to be fatal. Each surviving investigator who has not been eliminated is defeated and suffers one physical trauma. So we get one physical trauma. Okay, and then we read um, If no resolution was reached, each investigator resigned or was defeated. As you walk down the slope, utterly exhausted, you hear a sound of a hundred beating wings. Pale, translucent insects cover the black rocks atop the hill, whirling incessantly. Uh, what are they saying to each other in the, their own la alien language? Do they know about the world be beyond the heath? You shudder when you wonder how many more lurk in the caverns below. If there are exactly three crystal remains in the victory display, play, proceed to resolution one. If there are exactly one or two crystal remains in the victory display, skip to resolution two. You lay the rem remains of uh, you could recover in the bed of Theo's sky blue truck. The build-up of minerals makes them simultaneously heavy and incredibly brittle. You don't know what warped the bodies of the Pearl family, but it surely wasn't quick. They must have been horribly deformed when they died. You document the remains and a few samples of, of the crystal growth, uh, then bury the remains in the shallow grave at the base of Pearl Ridge. In your camper log record, the remains were partially recovered. Proceed to resolution 3. Once you have left Pearl Ridge behind, you study Susan Pearl's diary. The account 
chronicles the rise and fall of Susan Pearl's investments in agriculture and mining in, on Hemlock Isle is in the decade leading up to 1906. The business entries are in their pursed with prayers, illustrations of birds and occasional details of the strange warrens underneath Pearl Ridge's other entries mentions spreading sickness in the orchard workers and the Pearl family along with the repeated harsh ship in their mining efforts. The last entry written in a long erratic scroll catches your attention. I'm still not certain if what I experienced was a dream or a vision. At midnight I awoke in to the uncanny feeling of being watched and when I opened my eyes I saw a pale sphere of watery light in the corner of my room dancing like something in a fairy story. As soon as I laid eyes on it, the thing flew out the window and I followed it out into the or orchid. Uh, what I saw is something I can only describe as a miracle. A hundred more fairy lights danced in the orchid. As I watched the lights, they grew brighter and I felt almost as though I was flying. I, I had a heady bliss took over my mind and I felt different somehow, as if there were another me, five other me's beating within my chest, and as I looked out at the trees, I saw myself in them too. In all of this, strong and thick, with uh, knotted skin and branches for arms, I saw myself, my place and in all of creation and all of my fears. For Ezra, for mine, for our health, melted away, I knew only joy, such joy. I am the eyes, all eyes that see, I am the brilliance. Susan Pearl, June 22, 1906. In her Campbellock record, Madame Pearl's diary was recovered. Proceed to resolution 4. Miskatonic survey, June 1926. Members Marcus Musgrave et al. Uh, surveyed Pearl Ridge. Northern hills were devastated in an unknown event. Persistent contamination has led to mineralization and crystallization of organic life. Local caverns overrun by a massive insect colony. Insects exhibited vespid and termitid behaviors and physiology. Further study needed. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory axe value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator may now spend the experience card under unspec experience in your campaign log. In the area surveyed section in your campaign log, check the of Pearl Ridge. Check your campaign log. If it is day two, turn to prelude the second evening on page 20, uh, 43. Okay, so we received uh, one, two, three, four, five experience only, but that's okay. We'll have to make do. But yeah, that was the silent heat scenario, and we will see after the Second night prelude, uh, which uh, direction we are going with the campaign. But hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.